In 2009, From Software released a new action RPG that would be the first of its genre. This was set to be a PlayStation 3 exclusive that was supervised by Japan Studio. The title was Demon Souls, and by incorporating a set of interesting features, it would help to develop the Souls genre. Demon Souls would have a high level of difficulty, almost to the degree of classic action titles. The goal was to provide a true sense of challenge and accomplishment to the player. Built into this was the Souls system. The player would earn souls throughout their journey, and this would be a form of currency, along with experience points to better your stats. The player would also need to heavily consider their actions because if they died, their souls would be left at the spot of their death. If they could manage to return back to where they died, then they would retain those souls. But if they died again before returning there, then those souls would be lost forever. The risk of loss was very important to the developers, and core to the identity of their game, so much so that they would carefully phrase the system them to Sony, as they feared the executives would want to change this element to make the game easier. Multiplayer would be another key feature and layered in an obscure nature. Players could join other games and assist them with boss fights, or invade another player's game and turn a single player level into a PvP encounter. The multiplayer was seen as a means to enhance the single player, rather than be a separate mode. Demon Souls was aiming to be an innovative title, and even experience their share of developmental problems, with the team early on lacking a coherent vision. From Software managed to overcome these challenges and create their Souls game. It was first released in Japan in February of 2009, but it did not see commercial and critical success until it was released in the West later that fall. This particular brand of action RPG grabbed many players, and they wanted more of it. From 2009 to 2022, From Software continued to improve and hone their craft. This saw the release of the Dark Souls trilogy, the Sony PS4 exclusive Bloodborne, and Sekiro. Each of these titles presented their own versions of the growing Souls genre, and From Software showed no signs of stopping. In 2022, they released their most ambitious entry yet. Elden Ring would feature much of the beloved aspects of the Souls games, but now it would be centered around an open world. The prior titles had rich, interconnected levels with captivating areas to explore, and now with an open world, the goal was to provide even more choice to the players. Join me as we take a look at the making of Elden Ring. Miyazaki is seen as the creative head behind the long-running Soul series. He started at From Software as a coder for the Armored Core franchise. They were a set of games focused on robot combat. During his time at From Software, he heard about a game that was not doing so well. This troubled project would go on to be Demon Souls, but at this time, the team lacked a clear vision, along with being unable to create a compelling prototype. Demon Souls was pitched as a dark fantasy action RPG, and this greatly interested Miyazaki. He was motivated to find a way to take control of the game's development and turn it around for the studio. There was an element of creativity and freedom that interested him too. He thought this could be a way to implement and try out some of his ideas for a game, and if they didn't work, he felt no one would really care since the project was already seen as a failure. With Miyazaki at the helm, what would be the version of Demon Souls that the world would know took shape. The development team was not interested in following any current industry trends. They were inspired to return gaming to its fundamentals. As such, Demon Souls would implement a design that allows for the player to problem solve and work things out for themselves. This core design is where many of the iconic features came from, like the soul system, multiplayer being used to enhance the single player, and bosses being very unique, varied, and most of all, exciting. Many other series mechanics were first developed here, like players being able to leave messages on the ground to warn new players of traps, or an enemy lying in wait for them. From Software wanted this to be a challenging yet rewarding 
experience by looking back to a more classic age of gaming. Oddly enough, when the game was first released in Japan in February 2009, the initial sales were lower than expected, along with this game not being something that anyone could easily pick up. Demon's Souls slowly gained a reputation of one that demanded the player to both understand and master the systems in it. As many were finding out, this was not your typical action RPG, and that created a huge draw to it. Sales began to grow, and so did the lively community. With the success of Demon's Souls, the creative team was interested in pursuing more, and thus the Souls genre was born. From Software is no stranger when it comes to overlapping their game's development. Dark Souls 2, Bloodborne, and even Dark Souls 3 overlapped at one point. This allows the creatives behind these massive projects to work effectively on their current project, while also being able to transfer to their next one. From Software uses a system of co-directors as a means to share the project load, along with ensuring a shared vision with the head creator Miyazaki being involved in each one. It is an interesting system which allows the studio to effectively use their different teams teams to continue to work on new projects while working towards a unified vision. In 2015, From Software began development of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This game took some inspiration from the beloved stealth action series Tenchu, along with having a larger focus on sword combat. In 2017, work also began on another project that would end up being From Software's most ambitious entry into the Souls genre, where Sekiro was geared more towards heavy actions. This new project would be a third-person action RPG, with core gameplay Play that would be very similar to the Dark Souls trilogy. This title would be known as Elden Ring, and one of the key distinguishing features compared to the prior Souls entries would be the open world. This would easily be their biggest game from playable size and narrative. The developers looked at this as a large field to play in, full of rich exploration, dangers, and threats. The team wanted to include large castles to find and explore, and these would be made up of the same fashion as their older titles. For example, the player may encounter a large castle with multiple paths, secrets, and hidden ways on how all of it unlocks and is interwoven together. These castles would be familiar to anyone who had played one of the prior Souls games. Bosses and climatic encounters would return as a means to bookend key areas. These fights would be tough, unique, and rewarding. From Software wanted to lean more into the RPG character building with Elden Ring. As such, a wide variety of weapons, magic, and ways to approach each enemy encounter would be provided to the player. This freedom would allow the player to make a character that fits their playstyle. In contrast to their prior game Sekiro, which favored a particular playstyle, whereas Elden Ring would be more open and freeform in how the player approached their build. This meant that there would be a wide variety of melee fighters, magic users, ranged options, and many interesting combinations of each. Dark Souls was used as the groundwork for this area, and Elden Ring would go beyond this. Elden Ring would maintain the very same design philosophy as their prior games, encouraging the players to overcome adversity. The team did not want difficulty to be implemented just for the sake of making it hard, but rather provide opportunities for the player to improve and learn from their mistakes, along with overcoming the odds. Death is seen as a learning opportunity where the player asks, what did I miss? What details should I have noticed? How should I approach this differently? Maybe I should use one weapon over another. The developers wanted to use death as a means to bring the player an even greater reward. Continually facing those odds by learning and adapting allows for a unique sense of joy in overcoming those hardships. There's a fine balance between the appropriate amount of challenge and the game being unfair. Elden Ring would present what would seem to be overwhelming odds, with a chance at success and this is what the developers wanted the players to shoot for. Souls games have a history of being very tough, and From Software has worked to have a design that is enjoyable for a player to repeat a challenge until victorious. And Elden Ring would provide this with a considerable amount of new options. The developers wanted to maintain that balance of making something that their fans would expect from them, along with allowing for more accessibility for new players.
player freedom was a top priority for the development of Elden Ring. This game was being designed to let players tackle most of the game in any order they choose. To help deliver true exploration and discovery, the map would not be filled in. The player would have no idea what would be waiting for them. They can find map fragments that would show what the geography of the area was, but it would not highlight dungeons or items to grab. The team wanted the player to feel one way when they entered an area for the first time, with it being completely foreign to them, and then after finding the map fragment, the player could reassess how they wanted to tackle that area. These small elements contributed to maintaining that sense of discovery. The player dictates where the adventure takes them and how they want to explore. They would never really know what they might find, whether it be a new dungeon to conquer, an optional boss fight, or something completely unexpected. All these elements would encourage exploration and reward those choices. One of the larger goals of Elden Ring was to apply the Souls formula to an open world setting. An early challenge from Software Face was how do they maintain the mechanics and gameplay style of the Souls games while offering a renewed sense of openness. This meant that the team needed to consider elements like balancing exploration, how that integrated into the boss fights, player progression, and how all of these new elements balance together with the historical ones. Another challenge was the pacing of the player's progression as it relates to the freedom provided in the open world. With the open world expanding the scale of the game compared to the prior Souls entries, From Software wanted to also expand the actions the player could do in this space. In Elden Ring, the player could approach a combat situation from a variety of ways. The traditional approach would be engaging with your adversaries head on, or the player could utilize a new stealth system for getting the leg up on enemies or even clearing many of them out. Summoning allies from the prior games would return, but in single player, AI summons could be used to provide you with a partner. The open world is equal parts exploration, discovery, and choice, and that choice is interwoven into all of the combat options. With the open world being vast and containing plenty of locations to find, the team realized that they were going to need to provide a mount as a means to aid in the traversal. Elden Ring would feature horseback riding and that was influenced by their work on Sekiro. The horse would be called Torrent and would provide a convenient way to navigate the world. Torrent could move much faster than the player, but it could act as a means for vertical movement too. While on Torrent, the player can perform a double jump. Summoning and dismissing your horse was implemented to be very easy to do. An important part of the horseback riding is that the developers never wanted to force sequences where the player had no choice but to use the horse to complete it. The goal was to build situations where the design would suggest mounted combat. As a strategy, and then like many things within Elden Ring, it would be up to the player to make the choice or not. For example, the world map is huge and using Torrent for traversal is then encouraged. Because he will get you where you need to go, a lot quicker, but the player also has the choice to explore the open world on foot. Torrent would be another tool in the player's arsenal, and something that would act as a personal choice based on what the player decides. With From Software's first attempt at an open world, they were trying to blend providing enough direction to the players, so that they generally know where they need to go. But that path is not the only one that can be taken, and wandering off is encouraged. The open world provides freedom and choice to the player. Then it is up to the player to decide what gameplay choices they want to make and choose how they want to tackle their adventure. Elden Ring was aiming to provide many options to the players, so much so that new players could pick this one up and be able to enjoy it as their first Souls experience. Miyazaki knew that accessibility could not compromise the challenging situations that the Souls series is known for, but rather by the developers offering more options, these would be seen as tools for the player to use to overcome tough situations. This would be seen in many areas of the game. For one, Elden Ring was not built for one playstyle, but rather the player has a large amount of options and how they develop their character. For example, they may become a melee-wielding tank or a magic-focused glass cannon. The open world itself would offer options that in turn would make the game more accessible. If a player comes to a boss that is giving them a hard time, and then they can turn around, explore somewhere else, and return back for a rematch when they are stronger. But the intent of this design is that it's all based on player choice. A player may want to stay and obsessively learn the attacks of a boss to effectively anticipate their moves, or they can go in several other 
other directions to level up, find new equipment, and weapons. While combat would be a large part of the gameplay experience, the act of setting out in a direction and seeing what you could find would be both equally as important and encouraged. Exploration and discovery would contribute to the accessibility, as it is another avenue for meaningful gameplay and rewards that are outside of the combat encounters. The implementation of the stealth system was designed to allow for a completely new approach to Souls enemy encounters. The player could use this as a means to sneak through a base, observe their enemies, know who to attack first, or even dodge them altogether. The vegetation could be used as a means to hide and visual cues from enemies would give the player information on if they are about to be discovered. As part of this, it would be up to the individual to find the foes that hinder your stealth. For example, in some areas, there would be enemies with horns that could alert the entire base. As the player explored, they would find new summons that they could use in combat and boss fight encounters. AI summons would be a new mechanic that would allow for an AI ally to assist you in fights. They could be even leveled up through finding certain items. If the player chose to use them, they could help balance out how they built their own character. Features like this were implemented to enhance the accessibility of the gameplay. Multiplayer would be returning as players could summon both random and friends to assist them in boss fights. The barrier to entry to access co-op would be much more straightforward, and as a result, the developers aimed to push this area of the game more. The goal with the multiplayer was to make the option easier to use, and reduce the number of hoops to get players to summon allies. From Software was shooting for more accessibility in Elden Ring, but they had no intention of decreasing the difficulty which remained a core tenant of their identity, but rather they looked to providing meaningful gameplay choices that the player would then decide to use, or in some cases, completely ignore. From Software provided the open world and the free and how it can be tackled, then it was up to the player to make those meaningful choices. The fallen leaves tell a story. The great Elden Ring was shattered. Miyazaki was a huge fan of writer George R. R. Martin, who is most famous for his work on the Game of Thrones series. One of the head executives at From Software knew this, and reached out to Martin to potentially work on Elden Ring. They were anticipating that Martin would turn them down, but oddly enough, he agreed to meet with From Software and agreed to collaborate on Elden Ring. Martin was familiar with the Dark Souls games, and was very interested in this fresh new fantasy world. George R. R. Martin worked on creating the lore and mythos of Elden Ring. This would act as the source for the From Software developers to create their main narrative from. Martin was given some vague themes and ideas for the lore, and then was freely able to creatively construct whatever he wanted for the history. He would share his ideas and direction for the backstory with the From Software writers, and this collection of ideas worked well for this process. As part of this, Martin was asked to create dramatic heroes to help flesh out the world, and narratively this would be a departure to have characters featured in this way for a Souls-like game. The main the main story in these Souls games are constructed in a way that always services the player's experience. Miyazaki felt that it was important to maintain room for the user interpretation and how that creates communication between the players in the community. Martin and the From Software writers worked together to find the best avenues to deliver the story. It was even cited that Miyazaki and Martin became friends through this process. There were other outside influences that helped to shape the narrative from the Lord of the Rings to the tabletop RPGs like Rune Quest. Many of the themes and motifs resonated with Miyazaki and helped to shape the narrative. And one other whom grace would again bless. A tarnished of no renown. Cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring. 
Elden Ring launched on February 25th, 2022, and it quickly became a smash hit. Within its first week, it had 1 million concurrent players on Steam, and by mid-March, it sold 12 million copies. The estimates for Elden Ring was to hit a figure of 4 million copies sold by the end of March, and halfway through it, they more than surpassed it. For reference, the Dark Souls trilogy took 9 years to sell 27 million copies, and by mid-March, Elden Ring was almost halfway there. Based on the extreme success for this young game, it was certain that much of what the developers were trying to achieve resonated with many players. And, and as the players were able to dig into the game more and more, they were able to appreciate the craft at play to achieve such a fantastic game. As evident from the high sales numbers, both historical fans and newcomers were pleased with this game. Elden Ring managed to hit a sweet spot where From Software did not dumb down or compromise their identity to appeal to a wider audience, but rather the implementation of more freedom through choices allowed the game to be more accessible than the prior games. Bandai Namco teased that they are looking into expanding Elden Ring beyond the realm of video games. From Software even teased that the potential for a sequel with Elden Ring having such a rich history to its world. While the direction of the sequels or even seeing Elden Ring featured in other entertainment mediums are up in the air, two things are certain. One is that an expansion of some kind is probably in the works by From Software, and most of all, the developer's work paid off immensely. From Software saw Elden Ring as the culmination of everything they had accomplished with the Dark Souls series. They saw that through making and honing their craft over several years, with this genre has prepared them to create something so ambitious as Elden Ring. Elden Ring mainly exists because of what they were able to learn from their prior titles, and it shows. The many extensive castles that the player can explore are very reminiscent of classic Dark Souls designs. This was From Software's first attempt at an open world, and they delivered something so fresh within the AAA space, with exploration, discovery, freedom, and full of choices for the player to make. The large amount of build diversity meant that players could find something that truly fit their style, while also experimenting with new combat options. Elden Ring represents the very best of the AAA games market, and what it is truly capable of accomplishing. If you are interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you would like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.